A lot of the mistakes that footballers make in matches is down to certain fundamentals not being mastered. And so in this video, I wanna go over some of the fundamental mistakes that so many players make, you know, vast majority of players make. And so if you're making these mistakes, please take this to heart, start working on these things, because if you can start changing these from mistakes to being able to do these competently, it will change the way you play and it will allow you to have a bigger impact in a positive way in matches. That's coming up next. Before we get into the rest of the video, I want to let you know that the standout footballer bundle is still going on right now where you can get four training programs for less than the price of one. If you want to learn more and see if this is a fit for you, you'll get more information on each product and some more stuff. Just go to the link down below in the description to see if it is right for you. We're only doing this for around a week. There's probably only a few days left as I am filming this or as you are seeing this. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you go check it out just to see if it's something Something that you want and if it will be a good fit for you. Anyway, let's get into the rest of this video. So getting into the first fundamental mistake, and this one is not playing simple most of the time. I can't tell you the countless number of players I've played with or played against who were really good. They were really good players, and if they played a different way, they may have been able to play at a higher level, or they may have played a lot better in matches, but they would overcomplicate the game. They would take one too many touches way too many times, or they would shoot it when they should have passed, or dribbled when they should have passed, or whatever else it is. If you look at any top player, they know when to play simple and when to take calculated risks, but you'll see that they have mastered playing simple. They can play the short one-two passes masterfully. They can get out of tight space and retain the ball. They know when to dribble and when to stop dribbling and do something else. But you know, when you get higher and higher in level in football, you know, that one millisecond opening to pass will go away very quickly. It goes away quicker, the game is quicker. You're expected to be able to do the fundamentals better, more crisper and faster. And so if you're not playing simple or you don't know how to play simple that well, then it doesn't really matter how good your ability on the ball is or how good a player you are. It's not really going to fly at the higher levels. You need to know how to play simple and play it most of the time. In fact, in the comments, if it resonates, put I am training to master the fundamentals of football. Put that down below and we'll move on to number two. Now this one is one that you're taught as a kid, but a lot of us still forget, and you can even see this at the highest level sometimes, although it's very rare, and it's passing and moving. And nothing is more frustrating to a coach or even to teammates too, when you pass the ball and you admire your pass, or you don't get available for the return pass. Now in some situations you won't because you have to retain your position. So like if you're a defensive player, you're not gonna do so many give and goes and things of that nature. But a lot of times if you pass and then don't move into the available space or don't strategically stay put because maybe that space is still available, you are really putting your teammate, especially if they're in a tight situation, in a bad spot. Because passing and moving creates more passing lanes, it creates more space, it allows for whoever's receiving the ball to have more options. And because you're not passing and moving, you are hurting your team. You are preventing potential attacks that maybe you could get the ball back in space. Your potential not allowing for potential outlets that your teammate may need. If you watch, again, the best players, you watch the pro game, they pass and move. They're always looking for those spaces they can pass and move into and always looking to be a available all of the time, even if they don't get the ball. It does not guarantee you'll get the ball. Your movement might be just enough so that your teammate can dribble out of trouble or it can be a decoy for your teammate to do something else, but it's still very important to pass and move. And a lot of players don't do this. And again, it's something you need to be so ingrained with. You need to be instinctual about it. You need to train to the point where you're doing this automatically because it's not something you should just be doing sometimes. It's something you should be doing most times and it will hurt your game and hurt your team in ways too if you're not doing this. If you're enjoying this video or it's helping you so far, please hit that like button and we'll move on to number three. And number three is not being competent on both sides with both feet. Now, it is not a requirement that you be just as good with both feet. In fact, very few players are, even players at the top level, they have a definite stronger foot, but they are still 
competent, which means skillful, and they can use their other side. So if you're, for example, a striker and you're right-footed, you want to make sure you can also finish on your left. You want to make sure you can dribble and use skill moves to get back on your right. You want to make sure that your left foot is not there just to stand on, and you can actually use it in one way or another. So if you've been avoiding using your weak foot in training, you need to start incorporating it. You know, in my eyes, you want to be using it at least as much, especially when it's weak, as your dominant foot in training. And in fact, you can even up it a few reps for everything you do using your weaker foot. This is how you're going to get better. There's no way around it. And you will need to get better on your weak side if you want to be a quality player. Again, like if you have a weak foot and the opposition recognizes that, they're going to try and put you on that foot every single time. But for me, for example, I used to play striker all the time when I played way more competitively. And it didn't matter if they put me on my left because I could score almost as well on my left as my right. And it became a weapon. It made defenders a little more nervous too because now they knew, oh, if we put him on his left, he can still score. And so it gave me the upper hand. It made such a difference having a good left foot, a good weak foot over not. And I knew players who had a really good dominant foot and not so much a weak foot. And in training or in matches even, when I've seen them play, opponents would realize this and just force them onto their weak foot and were able to snuff out danger when they had the ball much easier. So please make sure you're working on your weak side. It is essential to just being a better player. Number four, uh, the fourth fundamental mistake is just not being consistent enough. If you want to get to a higher level, if you want to be an elite player, if you want to be within that 1% of all players or less than 1% of all players, then you need to be consistent with your training. You know, football is not about high intensity training in a short amount of time. You might do that as well, but you would mix that with consistent training over time. Progress is made over time consistently through the years. It is not something that snap your fingers and you are good at. You need to be training all of the time, consistently following a schedule. Again, the standout player bundle deal is going on right now. You can get some proven systems that you can follow and stay consistent with, but you need to make sure you are staying consistent with your training. And a lot of players don't get better simply because they're just not training enough. They're not getting out there with the ball, doing ball work. They're not working on things that are specific for their position. They're not, you know, maybe they're out of shape. You know, if you're not training consistently, you can't really complain about the results that you're getting because those results are contained within training consistently. If you do, however, train consistently and you're just doing your best every single time you show up to the training pitch, you're doing the recovery work, you're doing all that, you will improve. You absolutely will if you are putting in the work. And number five, very quickly, I just want to mention, please develop your confidence. This is a huge mistake that so many players make because I know it's not as fun. You're not using the ball when you do this, although you can develop your confidence while using the ball as well, like your confidence on the ball. When you have, get in repetitions, you develop more confidence. Absolutely. But please work on your confidence overall because so many players who are, are genuinely good players, really skillful, have great ability, sometimes don't show it or, or never achieve what they could because they're not confident in themselves. They don't have belief. And again, I'm sure you've heard the saying, if you won't believe in yourself, no one will. No one is coming to save you and tell you that you're good enough or whatever else it is. You have to give that to yourself. And you can do that through building self-belief and confidence in your ability. So please, I implore you to work on that. So many players do not, and it ends up hurting them. Um, and I see this in players I work with, or I see this in players I've played with or against. I've seen this in myself in the past too, in my past in playing too, when I didn't have confidence or I didn't work on this area, it really can trip you up and it's a huge mistake many players make. So please make sure you're working on it. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Now, if you really wanna eliminate some of those mistakes from your games, the next video you should watch is right here. I'll see you in the next one.